today we'll be doing the rocket stove part three. Uh, I went off and I've made myself lots and lots and lots more sodium silicate, four and a half litres to be exact, um, and it took literally about 20 minutes. So watch my other video on how to make sodium silicate and literally you need to do it once and you learn it's, it's such a simple process that it takes no time at all to make it. If you haven't actually watched it, have a look up there now, click there, it will take you to another window, have a quick watch of that. It is so simple to make and it, it surprises me because of how expensive it is to buy. Um, I originally bought this full of nor, um, sodium silicate, not homemade stuff, and it cost about £12. Um, to make that it probably cost me less than 50p. So, you know. Now, on the last episode, um, I'd spoken about how I thought my um, perlite mix was a little bit too dry. And unfortunately I was right, let me show you that a sec. Um, the top is extremely crumbly and you can keep sort of digging it out to some, um, some degree and to some depth. So what I'm thinking about doing is getting sodium silicate and spraying it all around here. We're going to use a spray bottle possibly and spray it all around and just keep doing it until it's completely saturated and that way hopefully I'll be able to let it soak all the way through and start hardening that way. Um, I've already mentioned that I'm going to be putting a, um, a fire cement of some kind on top. I've done lots and lots of research for that before and recently. I think I've come up with the um, the ingredients I'll be using, like the, the method I'll be going with, but I will be doing a video on how to make it and which ones there are, and we'll do lots of different tests. So first off then, I want to coat this very, very liberally with lots and lots of sodium silicate, probably um, half a litre, I would have said, but we'll have a look. So what I'm thinking is if I can use all of that and I'll just keep spraying. What I want to do is I want to focus on around the tube and where the tube... Hang on, let me show you. What I'm thinking of doing is spraying lots around the tube to make sure that it soaks down all the way along the tube. So when I remove the tube, there'll be less flakage. There will be a lot of flakery anyway. Flakery, what a great word. But also, I want to spray it on along here so that it slowly drips down to here and will coat around this side of the pipe too. It may or may not work. I honestly don't know. But the first thing we need to do then is get the camera right and we'll... I think we'll attempt to use a spray bottle. What we might find with the spray bottle though is we might find that it clogs it all up and I ruin another spray bottle, but we'll have to see. Okay, so first off, let's attempt to fill it up. Now you'll notice in my sodium silicate there's lots of what looks like scum and horribleness. Now that is just where the indicator crystals, which are in my sodium silicate, it just leaves like a, uh, a like a, a viscous, slimy residue, which it does nothing to anything. It's absolutely fine. It's not an issue at all. Do that much for now. As I say, this might just block the spray nozzle. I, I honestly don't know. But this cost me 99p for two, so it's not like I'm breaking the bank again. And I've had it for about a year, so let's let's try. spray bottles I've seen a nice little hack to allow it so that no matter which way up you spray they'll still spray nicely for you but I haven't got time to mess about with stuff like that I'll just keep doing this for an hour oh and we're leaking everywhere no it's just for some reason leaking everywhere. Maybe it used to happen with water when I was doing it. I don't know. Oh, nice. Lucky this isn't made with 
nasty caustic stuff. Right, okay. I'm going to slowly dribble it around the edge. As I say, I'm liberally dripping it all around the pipe. Oh, and down the pipe, it seems. Right. I'm just going to keep doing this, and I'm going to do literally everywhere. Just drip it, dribble it everywhere, because I've got plenty of the stuff. It doesn't bother me. And it should be absolutely fine. What I want to do is I'm just going to keep feeding it in until it's... It, there's no more absorbing in, I think. Um, it will take longer to dry this way, I think, but it just means that it's definitely not going to be all crumbly. I, I'm probably putting way too much on now, but I'm being a bit speedy with it now. There you go. Let that all sink in. Okay, that sunk in really, really quick. So it shows how dry this, this mix was originally. It was only down to about there that it was so dry. But um, that was me just trying to use as, um, as little sodium silicate as I could because I didn't have much left. But I've got plenty now so it's, you know, just add it as much as I want now. And, oh, can you see oh, this stuff here actually was a reaction by mistake with um, with very liquid. I tried, to, I, I washed a piece up, but then didn't clean it off, and um, I put it straight into the mix, and it instantly changed the surface tension, which brought a lot of stuff out of solution. But it doesn't matter. Again, not bothered. It's still sodium silicate. Still does its job. It, uh, that's another thing I've noticed with sodium silicate is it's very forgiving. You know, it doesn't really matter about uh, amounts. You know, I, um, on my video I say about 200 grams of this um, and so on and so on. But that is the average that you should go for. And, you know, I, I'm not saying just tip it all in and go, you know, not think about it. But... If you've only got 150 milligrams of, um, of grams of something, just use that. See what happens. Um, all it will do will change the um, concentration of the overall amounts. For example, I added, for this lot, I added a little bit more sodium hydroxide uh, because I found that a lot of the silica gel wasn't melting, no matter how much I cooked it up and tried to melt it. So I added a little bit more uh, sodium hydroxide and that seemed to do the trick. So. Once you've made some, you will sort of learn what its tolerances are and, you know, what you can add, what you can take away and so on. But there we go. That's all I'm doing for now. Um, once this has dried in about two or three hours, I'll start having a look at it. But it won't have dried for about two days properly, but I'm just going to come back to it and I'll do a few tests just to see how well that's getting on. Okay, so it's two days later since um, we put in the sodium silicate and let's just have a look at it and see how it's got on. Okay, so it is solid as a rock. It's worked really, really well. Um, basically, it's an, <laughs> I'm glad I did it this way because it does mean if you do make yours a little bit too dry, just put some more sodium silicate in and it will solidify it. We still get little bits of crumble from the top, but it's only literally the, like, the last couple of you know, rocks that weren't, um, that weren't flat. We've also got a bit of a sticky patch here, but that's just where the, the scum from the sodium silicate was. My bad. Okay, today we're going to make a fire cement. Um, I've done a lot of research for this this part of it. Well, I've done a lot of research for all of it, but this part I, I looked and looked and looked because I wanted to make sure I did the right thing. And with all the research that I've done, I've come up with one formula that I like, you know, that I've tinkered around with. Um, I don't have any exact measurements for any of the stuff. It's a sort of go-by-feel kind of thing. So we'll, I'll show you that. Now, I did say in the last video that I would do a video solely on different um, fire cements and so on. There is three main fire cements that I looked into that seemed quite good and seemed to be what I was looking for. But I need to get this 
um, Rocket Stove done. I want to get this up and running and functioning for us lot. So I'm gonna do. I've got. I've got a couple more to make anyway. I need to make a much bigger one than this, and I need to make myself a little furnace and so on. So I will do a fire cement tutorial, proper long-winded. You know, exact amounts and so on of everything. But I won't be doing it yet. That will be probably in the next couple of months. But let's get on with this one and I'll show you how to make the fire cement that I'm going to use today. For this part of the project you're going to need sodium silicate. I'm not sure how much but you should need loads and loads. Well it depends on the quantities you're using I suppose. You're going to need aluminium oxide. You can get this as sandblasting particles or you can get it as the, chem the actual chemical from chemical suppliers. You're going to need a small amount of uh, plaster of Paris, not anywhere near as much as I've got there. And you're going to need some baby powder, some talcum powder. As I say, I don't have any exact measurements for this. It's, you want it to get into like a buttercream kind of consistency, like cake frosting kind of thing. So let's do that first. Now obviously I need to fill quite a bit of my um, rocket stove up at the top and I want some to fill uh, to clean out the tube, the tube areas when I take them out. But I'm only going to make the stuff for the top right now. So put in some sodium silicate. If you haven't by now learned how to make it from my channel, please just go and have a look. It's so simple to make. You'll save so much money. Uh, mine's purple again because of the sodium, uh, the silica gel I use have um, indicator crystals in. So don't worry about that. Colour is not important. In fact, I found that the purple has helped me because you can tell when you've got the right amount of um, sodium silicate to perlite when you're making a mixture. Happy baby smiles. God, that's a strong smell, isn't it? I haven't smelled that since we had our kids when they were baby babies. What I'm doing now is I'm just squishing it against the wall side of the uh, container so it all mixes in a little bit better. This here is um, baby powder is actually magnesium oxide, I think that's right, and it will give us a nice little bond, James Bond. Okay, that'll do. Now we need some aluminium oxide. Now aluminium um, is not good to breathe in, and this stuff is not good to breathe in either. This is a really good. Uh, fire retardant thing so just go careful try not to breathe it in again we're trying to go for a, a buttercream kind of texture I think I may put a glove on in a minute and do the mixing by hand. Let me see if I've got an actual whisk. By the way, when you see me use kitchen equipment for making these projects, the, the equipment I use goes in the bin. A lot of times it's not safe to then be used for food. So i just warn you that. Don't go using your wife's, your mum's, or whoever's equipment without asking first. Without every intention of paying, buying another one or paying it back. Right, as you can see, it's, it's thickening, but I need some more aluminium oxide, I think. Do a little bit more talcum powder as well. And then the last ingredient we'll add is a small bit of um, oh, a small bit of plaster of Paris just to make it uh, harden quicker.
with this mixture just keep mixing until you've got no more um, no more lumps and you can see this is quite full of lumps so just squish them up against the side we'll get rid of them Again, more aluminium oxide. Like I said before, we're trying to get a buttercream kind of cake frosting kind of consistency. And then we'll add a little bit of plaster of Paris to harden it. Put it in as quick as we can. Right, I'm going to, this isn't turning into enough, so I'm going to add more sodium silicate, more talcum powder and more aluminium oxide. I think I'm going to have to find something a little better to mix with too. should ideally be wearing um, breathing apparatus, uh, safety glasses, the works with this stuff. You don't want this stuff getting in your eyes or your lungs. getting there it's not quite there yet bearing in mind as well we'll be adding the plaster of Paris which will thicken it a bit more as well but we don't want to use too much so a bit more aluminium oxide getting very thick very quickly so hopefully I'll be able to add a bit more sodium silicate to make a little bit more so I was getting a bit concerned that I wouldn't have enough of anything you know especially because I just had to go buy baby powder so we didn't have any gobsmacked Right, okay, let's 
get in there. Now what I need to do again quickly is re-oil re the tube because the tube's got quite messy now and I'm just going to use some kitchen spray oil again. I'm one of these people who just use what I've got lying around. I've got oil and stuff in the shed but that would mean going out to the shed. Okay, so now it's, it has thickened up quite a bit. What we want to do now, for this amount we've got in here, I'm probably going to use about that much. Tablespoon kind of style. Get it in there. And this way you're a bit under a time limit now. Because it won't take long for all this stuff to start competing for the moisture. If it gets too thick, too quick, then I will add a little bit more sodium silicate. Lovely. Okay, it's not as um, as uh, lump free as I'd have hoped, but I am not I'm not mixing it with anything, and I'm just doing it. It's just as quick as I can do it, to be honest. So let's go and tip this now in here. Okay, just very quickly I added a tiny bit more um, sodium silicate just to make it a little bit thinner to make it pouring e a bit easier. Okay, just very quickly I added a tiny bit more sodium silicate just to make it a little bit thinner to make it pouring e a bit easier. So here we go, pour it in. As you can see, there's nowhere near enough. But I've got to say, I probably, this, I can only make a very thin coating, I think. If I go, if I put too much in, I'm going to be spending hundreds of pounds on bits and pieces trying to fill this right up. Me and my wife had talked about it the other day, actually, and we discussed whether we thought we'd have enough. Right. Gonna go and get a spirit level to make sure my table's flat. Alright, if the table's level, which it is, this will dry level now, and then I can remove this. And what we do then is we'll do down on the inside of the pipes. Right, I'm gonna wait for that to dry and then I'm gonna show you what it's dried like and everything. And um, this was just a test to see what what it's like. Now, obviously, it was too runny. I knew that. I added uh, more on purpose just to make it so it was free. Um, it was free to run and level off where I, you know where I was. What I'm actually considering doing is doing a whole another layer of um, perlite and sodium silicate just to top it off um, and not use any of the um, thermal cement the fire cement at the moment um, and just use that on the middle basically this whole process has been a test so I'm not going to say definitely I'm doing one thing and I'm doing the other yet I'm just going to see how it turns out it's, it's, it has worked to level off the whole thing now so it is actually flat and if I leave it like that then I might drill some nuts and bolts uh, some bolts into the top to be where I rest my you know my kettle and so on on or I might use some rebar and I just don't know again all the tests so we'll see what it's like when it's dried okay it's been two hours since I uh, poured the um, fire cement and I think I made a faux pas I think adding that extra bit of uh, sodium silicate at the end has messed it up but two hours later it is drying but nowhere near the speed it should have it should have been completely solid by now so I've actually gone and put it out in the sunlight, something we don't get very much of. So maybe it's um, the universe's way of trying to help me out. Um, so in about an hour, well, I'll keep going and check on it. And when, when, when and if it's set properly, I'll let you have a look and I'll, I'll talk about what's happened and so on. I came back to uh, it uh, two, uh, about two hours later and I was shocked it was still quite, um, quite wet. And I started to rack my brains thinking, oh no, have I, have I mixed two of my, the different formulas up that I'd found out and had I made a mistake? And I was just about to, uh, not, you know, not know what the hell was going on and so on. And I've just realised that with this formula, 
it will take ages to dry, like, I don't know, another couple of hours in the sunlight, because you're supposed to fire it dry. Two issues with that. Number one, I can't dry it, I can't heat it in any way until I get the pipe out, and I've made mine so wet that I can't take the pipe out until it's hardened. So, bit catch-22, but I, I was suddenly worried that I'd made a complete mess of it, because of when it comes to doing a video, I do lots and lots and lots of research beforehand. And then I do lots and lots of research on the finer parts if there's multiple stages. And I just suddenly started panicking that I'd mix two of them up or something like that. But I haven't. Um, basically, I'll put it outside now. Uh, hopefully the sunlight will start to harden it a bit better. Uh, to a point where I can then take the pipes out and possibly uh, do it with a blowtorch. The only issue I've got is I don't have any um, propane left. So I might have to buy some more if, if I need to. Um, it, it will set eventually anyway. It's just whether I can be bothered to wait that long because I wanted to get the next part of it done. I actually wanted to give it a fire today. I wanted to light it all up and give it a test run. But I might not get a chance now. We'll see. Okay, what I'm trying to do here is heat up around the pipe enough to dry just that area so I can remove the pipe and then I'm going to cheat a little bit put the whole thing in my oven and see if I can cure it that way. A lot of the bottom is very, very dry. And we've had a little bit of a cave in at the top here. So what I need to do, I'm going to pour some sodium silicate in here. Oh, I don't know what to do. I, no, I'm going to put it in the oven first. And I'm going to dry it out completely. And then I'm going to get the sodium silicate in. I'm going to sodium silicate the floor. And I'm going to make some more of this concoction for the inner edges. 
I'm not going to just add a little bit more water off camera or any of that rubbish. So let's get it in the oven. Did the inception stove idea work? By that I mean the stove inside a stove. No. No, in, in as many technical terms as I could say, no it didn't work. Or it may not have worked. I don't know. Let's, let me show you. It was supposed to be on full for about five minutes and then I was supposed to uh, come down, turn it right down and leave it just to slowly, you know, do its magic. However, I forgot about it. I started watching a YouTuber that I watch a lot and they had a new playlist and, you know, one video turned into 25 videos. So, um, yeah, it got too hot. And the one amazing thing about this stuff is it is so, it retains its heat. This was, um, I turned it completely off about an hour ago and it's still too hot to touch. It's, con it's contained that heat, it's held that heat really, really well. I need to get inside very carefully now and I need to get more sodium silicate down here. And I've decided I'm gonna fill this completely again um, with the perlite and sodium silicate solution. And then I'm gonna co cover it. This was only supposed to be a test. I was supposed to do a, a uh, originally a very thin layer, see if it worked. If it did, brilliant. If it didn't work, then I was just gonna cover it in perlite again. And then I got it into my head that I was going to fill this whole section with this mix. Um, right up to the top, so it was nice and flat and beautiful. And then I obviously massively underestimated how much I'd need, which happens quite often with me. That's why I like numbers rather than anything else. But yeah, I'm thinking I'm going to put the pole back, uh, the tube back in, and I'm going to fill it right to the top with perlite this time, perlite and sodium silicate. And then I'm going to fix inside here by putting, um, I think just I'm just going to put sodium silicate in, and then I'm going to tamp it down very very gently. Um, because it's actually the the roof part of this has caught, kept its structure perfectly. I'll take the camera off and I'll give you a little look inside in a sec. So it's just the floor that didn't, and I think that's probably because I filled it again with all the sodium silicate. So it's actually solid as rock all the way down here, except in this area here, which I must have just missed. But if I make myself some sodium silicate mix, fill all this up, and then make the same cement I did, and I'll cover all the in innards then. But I definitely need to fill this in a bit with sodium silicate. I definitely need to get that wet again and tamp it all down, get it all nice. Because that's obviously where the sticks are going to go. And you don't want to just slowly dig yourself a hole, you know, down to the bottom. So I think I'll get the sodium silicate out and I think I'll do that right now. Okay, so this is the inside of it. And as you can see, it's really crumbly. So if I fill that all with sodium silicate up to the walls, it's, it's better, but still not perfect. So I'm going to get sodium silicate in as much as I can. We'll see how we get on from there. Because you just don't want it all crumbling once, it, once you start adding firewood to it and so on. So that's my next job now, sodium silicate in the whole insides. Okay, I've started off, I've made myself a primitive little squirty bottle. All I've done is punked a little hole in there. And it just hopefully will give me a little bit more pre precision when I'm spraying this stuff in. But we'll soon find out if anything will come out. Yeah. Sorry if I'm getting my head in the way, but I need to make sure I get everywhere with this. It keeps clogging up so that scum. Oh well. Needs a refill. It's not working too bad. 
this, once I've done this, I'm going to tamp it down with my hand and a with a glove on. And then I'm just leaving this then. spewing out onto my table is probably not the best thing. Okay, with my hands now, I'm just gonna tamp it down and squish it into place, hopefully. Yeah, I, I didn't tamp it down hard enough. Where I'm pushing now, there is huge amounts of um, movement. Right, let's um, move this off the heat tray a sec. Let me to tap it down a little bit easier. As I say on multiple things about this table, it's a beautiful little table and yes I am destroying it, but it was already quite destroyed and I've got to do a whole clean up operation on it soon anyway. Right, now I've got an old piece of plastic which I'm going to use to get a bit more precision, well a bit more shaping. Can you see how far that can actually go in? Heartbreaking. So basically what I've learned from this is tamp so much harder than I was doing. Don't let there be any anywhere that you haven't tamped down to absolutely within an inch of its life, you know. And this was, I think, the layer that I said, oh, I'm not going to tamp down because I want it all to fit together nicely and so on and so on. And I think that's what's messed it up. Right, that is as pressed in as I can. And now I've got an issue. I don't know whether to now repack it inside with um, with the sodium silicate and perlite, leave it like it is, and then just coat it with this stuff because this stuff is so much harder. This has dried like proper cement. I think I'm gonna have to do that, but I'm gonna need a lot, lot, lot of it. Right. Okay, that's it for this one I think, um, because otherwise I'm not going to get a chance to get it out because I've got loads to do the next few weeks, well the next few days actually, not weeks, um, I should have some time in between that to make the next part of this. Yeah, and what I'm going to do, the next part, I'm going to remix this stuff 
which has worked really, really well. It's proper solid as a rock. However, I need to mix it so it's more like buttercream and then I'm gonna shape the innards and I'm gonna make it look all pretty and beautiful. If I can, that is. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys again soon. Bye.